Keith Murdoch, a hard drinking, hard fighting, rugby union hard man, who after scoring the only try and the winning try in New Zealand's all black match against Wales in 1972, was sent home in disgrace after a fight and punching a security guard back at the hotel later that evening. But instead of heading back to New Zealand, the quiet and publicity shy Murdoch changed flights in Singapore and headed off instead to Australia, where he disappeared into the vast outback, going walkabout for over 40 years. And he was only ever spotted a handful of times since 1972. One of those times, rugby journalist Terry McLean tracked Murdoch down to an oil rig near Perth in 1974. Murdoch apparently appeared carrying a spanner and refused to speak to the reporter, chasing him away. Keith Murdoch was born in Dunedin in New Zealand in 1943. He would grow to become a six foot tall, 17 stone powerhouse. Keith Murdoch was a, a huge man, he had a 50 inch chest. Known for his tremendous strength. One tale of his legendary strength was when he was seen driving down the road in his Mini, towing another car. But as he had no tow bar, he apparently wrapped the tow rope round his arm and pulled the other car along with his arm out of the driver's window. He played rugby union from his early 20s, starting at Utago from 1964 to 1972, with one season each at Hawke's Bay and Auckland. He represented New Zealand in 27 matches between 1970 and 1972. And in 1972, the All Black team travelled to Wales and beat the Welsh team at Cardiff Arms Park. It would be the last time Keith ever played rugby. The hoisted kick by Sid Going that did it. John Williams a little late getting in. And look at all those New Zealand forwards. And this massive 17 and a half stone prop forward murder gets the try. Because after scoring the only try of the match, and in fact the winning try, Keith and the teammates would do the traditional celebratory drinks back at the Angel Hotel in Cardiff. And at some point in the night, Keith Murdoch was involved in a fight with security guard Peter Grant. There are actually quite a lot of security guards in the hotel. Many of them were patrolling with Alsatians. The general consensus of what happened is Keith went to the hotel kitchen looking for food later on in the night. He was refused entry by security guard Peter Grant. Other guards arrived and a fight broke out resulting in Peter Grant being punched by Keith Murdoch. The following day, for the first and only time in All Blacks history, Keith Murdoch was actually sent home in disgrace. The rest of the team threatened to strike and pull out of the tour if Keith was sent home, but Keith pleaded with the team to stay on and carry on playing without him. So the teammates headed off one way on the coach and Keith Murdoch headed off by himself on the way back to New Zealand where the media had gathered to wait for his arrival. But this is where the story takes a twist. Keith stopped at Singapore, but instead of getting on the flight to New Zealand, he got on a plane to Australia. There he would go out into the outback and disappear for 40 years. Keith would travel around finding work in remote areas all the way across Western Australia. He worked on oil rigs. He also worked with a friend, Errol May, on the remote 430 kilometer railroad which carried iron ore through the heart of Western Australia's Pilbara port between Headland and Newman. Keith's friend, Errol May, described how they would live in camps and caravans alongside the remote railway tracks. There were 30 to 40 men in each camp, a boisterous mess with busy kitchens and very basic living conditions. May said he only ever spoke with Keith about the fateful incident in Cardiff once and it was never mentioned again. May spoke of Keith Murdoch saying that Keith loved a beer and a good time, but he would never go looking for trouble. He would never start a fight, but he certainly could finish a fight if he had to. May also said Keith was a genuine man who did a lot of favors for a lot of people. He was a good man with a good heart. Keith Murdoch kept his past life a secret in his later years, and his best friend in the last 10 years of his life was Dean Parry. Parry had no idea who Keith was. The pair would drink together most afternoons in Carnarvon, nine hours north of Perth. And all the time that Keith was out in the outback, his all black teammates in New Zealand always kept 
an empty chair for him at the reunions, but Keith never arrived. Even now, there's an informal tradition when the All Blacks visit Cardiff, they will visit the Angel Hotel as a tribute to Keith. COVID confined the All Blacks to the hotel last tour. This time they're allowed out, reinstating traditions like a visit to the infamous Angel Hotel, where 50 years ago All Black Keith Murdoch punched a security guard before being sent home in disgrace. The prop never made it to New Zealand, hiding out in Australia. It's probably a little acknowledged within the team that um, the situation with Keith wasn't handled that well. You know, I, I don't, wouldn't wish that upon anyone to happen um, to feel like that these days. So Keith's friends have described him as a good, hard man, a good teammate who didn't deserve the reputation that he had. His good nature was also witnessed another time when the All Blacks played Ulster. Keith Murdoch. Keith Murdoch was a, a huge man, he had a 50 inch chest. And Ulster played the All Blacks in 1973 and they were in the Donadry Hotel and they were under police and army guard for three days. And at the dinner that night they, beat Ulster, they were beaten by the All Blacks and I was sitting for some reason between the two props, Kent King Lambert and Keith Murdoch. And after the dinner I said to Keith, do you fancy going for a couple of drinks? He says, I can't, because I am going to the security hut with two cases of Guinness to drink with the security men because they've looked after us so well. Now that me was a very kind act, and he's been labelled all these years basically as a thug. He wasn't. He was a very thoughtful man. So Keith had been in the outback for many years. He briefly came back to New Zealand in 1979 and saved a drowning child from a swimming pool but once again, he disappeared before any reporters could find him. And in 2001, Keith was questioned with the mysterious death of an Aboriginal man named Christopher Limerick. Limerick had been found dead in an abandoned mine. This was a few weeks after Keith had caught Limerick trying to break into his house. Now, Keith wasn't actually a suspect, but he had actually chased Limerick away from the house. And upon hearing of Limerick's disappearance, Keith had apparently remarked, I don't think he'll be back. In later years, Keith found out that he had a long lost son. His son was now in his late 40s and the pair were looking forward to meeting up in Carnarvon, where in a week before their meeting, in 2018, Keith sadly passed away at the age of 74. Keith was buried in Carnarvon in a dusty graveyard and around 12 mourners gathered to pay their respects, including Keith's sister. So that was the fascinating story of Keith Murdoch, a man who was maybe misunderstood. He liked to be by himself. He kept a very select group of friends. He would fight if he had to, but all the people that knew him spoke very highly of him. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching if you did make it this far. I really appreciate that. Uh, please feel free to hit the like button and to share the video if you like it. It really does help with the channel. And please feel free to subscribe as well because uh, that really helps with the channel. And I'd love it if you leave a comment, uh, let me know what you think of the video, let me know of any subjects you like for a future video, uh, fighters, rugby players, boxers, um, anything like that, leave it in the comment section and I'll, I'll stick it on my list and uh, I'll add it into a future video. So thank you everyone and I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. Cheers.